Hello and welcome to the Analysis of Winning Lineups podcast. I'm Big Italy 42 here talking about some big winners from this past weekend. And unfortunately, you will not hear the name Big Italy 42 again because I was not yet the million dollar winner. Maybe you were, and if you were, congratulations. I would love to have you on for an interview. We got an interview with uh, FanDuel's winner from last week. That was great. Uh, nice, fun time. Get, a, get inside the head of someone who just won a million dollars thought process before, after. It's a lot of fun. So, if you happen to be or know one of the people that we're about to talk about here, the FanDuel or DraftKings main winner, then uh, certainly reach out to me on Twitter at BigItaly42 or us at DF Cafe. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. We saw week five was uh, an interesting week. We saw some surprise performances and um, probably more disappointment than big surprise performances, I'd say, overall. Um, starting off at the top here, Joshua 9028, 206.54 points. First place out of nearly 230,000 people, uh, taking home a million dollars. On top, he had Eli Manning at 7.1% on 29.74 points. Eli Manning, at that low ownership, ended up with 441 passing yards, three touchdowns, another 11 yards on the ground. Monster performance by Eli. Part of that was how bad the 49ers secondary was. Part of it was how bad the Giants defense was, um, as the Niners just kept pace with them all game. And then, you know, the rest of that could be just the fact that they just had no running game ends. Um, Eli did a great job of distributing the ball all over the field, so that was a great play there. Next up, Devontae Freeman, and I will admit I was off him this week. I was wrong. I said I was going to fade him, and uh, I did fade him, and I regret it. I mean, it was a situation, once again, you see this guy last year, didn't look like he had it, but, I mean, he's he's grabbing this job and uh, running with it. So, he, uh, I mean, really the only hiccup in his day was the fumble into the end zone, which Julio Jones owners loved because he – fell on it for a touchdown, hobbled his way over there on his crutches and uh, fell on that touchdown. But either way, Devontae Freeman, once again, an enormous game, 197 total yards and a score. So uh, Devontae Freeman, you are now officially on notice that Devontae Freeman is for real. I mean, until we see differently, this was a, a tough matchup for him against that front seven, and he he certainly paid off. Uh, Doug Martin was the, the darling of the week. If you didn't have Doug Martin, Martin, you weren't winning millions. You probably weren't winning big Numbers of thousands either. Uh, huge, huge game for Doug Martin. Three touchdowns and uh, Devontae-esque, tr- Devontae Freeman-esque three scores. 158 total yards. Um, caught a touchdown, ran for two more touchdowns, and what it amounted to a shootout. Uh, Jacksonville and Tampa Bay, which was strange. It was one of the lowest totals on the week. Next up, Odell Beckham Jr. This one probably makes a lot of sense. Atlanta, not a great secondary. Obviously, he paired um, Eli Manning with Odell Beckham and Looks like he had left the game and was injured, kind of came back in, not 100%, drew a pass interference flag anyway. He ended up with a, a solid line, 7 for 121, and a touchdown. Uh, that touchdown came late as well, so um, congratulations on that Odell Beckham play. He was 17.6% owned, so, you know, decent amount of ownership for him. But once we saw the Julio Jones was not 100%, uh, that number creeped up quite a bit, I'm sure. Um, I, I don't know what the ownership was on Julio Jones offhand, but uh, I got him. You got to imagine it should have at least been lower than Odell Beckham. Um, next up, James Jones only had two catches in this one, but that's all he needed. One of them was a 65-yard touchdown catch that originally was ruled down at the one-yard line, eventually overturned for a touchdown. So uh, obviously that overturned touchdown there worth probably about seven hundred thousand dollars, if not more, to uh, Mr. Joshua ninety twenty eight. So. That was a big one for him there. Two for 77 and a score, but that's all you really needed at $6,400. Julian Edelman, another late touchdown here. Four for a buck 20 and one touchdown. 59-yarder early in the fourth quarter, I mean, against Dallas. And, I mean, <laughs> that secondary on that play looked absolutely terrible. I mean, he was zigzagging all over the place and just, just did whatever he wanted, got into the end zone there. And uh, the next up, the other darling of the week, return from suspension, Antonio Gates. On a week that was horrible for tight ends, Rob Gronkowski had a disappointing performance. Guys like Charles Clay were terrible. I mean, Gary Barnage, Tyler Eifert, and Antonio Gates were the guys you wanted. Antonio Gates had uh, both the Chargers touchdowns, 9 for 92 and 2 touchdowns. And uh, only Tyler Eifert outscored him, um, I believe. Uh, Gary Barnage was up there. But either way, those three guys were the trio. Really the only tight ends that paid off at all. Um, Matt Bryant, $4,700 against Washington, 7.9%. Um, I'm not going to spend much time on a kicker. He made two kicks and made both of his, uh, field goal or his extra point attempts. Not a lot of huge performances from kickers this week, but, uh, obviously Bryant was just good enough here. 
Denver Broncos defense, $4,900, 22.1% owned at Oakland. And, man, this defense was incredible here. Allowed 10 points, scored a touchdown. Um, actually, they scored the only touchdown for the Broncos. The offense didn't score a touchdown. Uh, three turnovers, four sacks, and uh, they were a popular play. But, I mean, that, they certainly paid off there in a big-time way with 22 points. Outscoring Edelman, outscoring Odell Beckham. I mean, they, that was one of the highest-scoring play, plays on this million-dollar lineup. So, uh, moving over here to DraftKings, where we've got Chin Tai 15, C H E N T H A I 15, taking home $1.2 million. Once again, this was a result of uh, Antonio Gates late, made this late surge, sent him into the million dollars. It had to be a, a fun night for Chen Tai. I'd love to hear about that if any of you know him. But Sam Bradford was the quarterback here, 5.4% owned. Had a solid game, 333 passing yards. Obviously, got that bonus. Two touchdowns, two interceptions. Uh, three rush yards, obviously, that uh, doesn't mean a whole lot for you there. But every little point counts when you're taking home $1.2 Justin Forsett next up, popular play, and rightfully so. Uh, finally got a touchdown late. We saw him get two touchdowns vultured by Joe Flacco on one-yard dives. And uh, as a, a Forsett owner myself, I was frustrated. But obviously, I didn't have a million dollars quite on the line here. So um, Forsett, a popular play, 23.8, but certainly paid off. Devontae Freeman, I mean, his story's getting kind of old by now. 21.7%. That's three straight weeks where he's been on a million-dollar lineup. Um, I mentioned all his numbers there earlier. Julian Edelman, same deal. 28.9 was the highest-owned player on this lineup. He ended up with 25 points with the bonus. Um, Allen Robinson hauled in a couple touchdown passes. 7 for 72 and two touchdowns. 26.2 points for him. Solid, solid performance. Emmanuel Sanders, the uh, lowest-owned wide receiver on this team, 6.7%. Denver did nothing on offense, but outside of uh, Emmanuel Sanders, I guess that is. 9 for 111, got the bonus there, 23.1 points. Um, a fine, fine amount for Emmanuel Sanders on what was a pretty disappointing week for wide receivers in general. Antonio Gates, of course, uh, two for two touchdowns, 9 for 92, like I mentioned earlier, 14% owned here, almost the exact same price as he was, or exact same ownership as he was on FanDuel, 30.2%. Or 30.2 points for him there. Doug Martin, just 5.4%. He was cheap and he had huge upside. And did he ever show it? 158 total yards, three touchdowns, 39.8. And then if you're expecting the Broncos defense, they are not here. This is the Green Bay Packers defense. And at 6.3% owns, three sacks, four interceptions, a touchdown, just 10 points scored, a block kick. This team did it all. If you didn't have the Broncos or the Packers, you probably didn't win a million dollars. But if you did have a Broncos the Packers and you're one of these two people, you did win a million dollars. So um, hopefully you learned a little bit um, from these lineup constructions. We've seen a lot of similar players in the past couple weeks. So maybe it gives you more of an idea of what's uh, what's happening, some trends, things like that, some lineup construction. So if you've got any questions or you happen to know either of these, find players here. Find me at Big Italy 42 or find us on Twitter at DF Cafe. Um, go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel. We've got lots of great content for the rest of uh, NFL season, of course. We've got uh, college football content as well. And NBA starting up very, very soon. So check all that out, and we'll see you next time.